the iPhone XS Max is really one of my favorite phones ever. I switched from the iPhone 7 Plus and it indeed was a huge step up. Now, three years have passed since the release of this phone and my question is, does this phone hold up? Does Apple's amazing years of software support help this phone? And should you get the iPhone XS Max in the year 2020? My name is DDT and we're about to find out. With the launch of the iPhone 12, it's very hard to see this phone as a new phone because it doesn't have the squared off edges and it's definitely a lot more curved and more reminiscent of the iPhone 11 Pro's design, which by the way wasn't that long ago. It's actually only a year old and I don't think the design of this phone looks ancient or anything like that. It still does look like a 2020 flagship um, despite it being three years old. It just doesn't have the matte finish like the 11 Pro Max and the iPhone 12 Pro Max that I personally am a huge fan of. Uh, this does still get very greasy and fingerprinty whenever I hold my phone like this. The next question is durability. Um, the phone actually has a few scratches and scuffs here and there. Um, actually, I realized a bit of scuffing on the camera over here. I don't know if you guys could see, but there's a bit of scuffing on the camera. Uh, but other than that, no major dents or scratches. Granted, I did keep this phone in a case, but right now, this phone still looks almost brand new. Nothing too major, and there is definitely no cracks whatsoever on the screen and the back. And with the scratches on the stainless steel, I don't know, it just, it just makes it feel a bit more... Um, like it aged really well. It's sort of like a leather wallet and how the patina on it sort of forms over time. The dirt and the grime gets on it and it just looks more weathered and used. And with the iPhone XS Max having the stainless steel frame, I do think it adds a lot more to that luxurious feel of the phone. Now next up, let's talk display. Now this isn't the Pro Display XDR or anything fancy like that. Um, but it is still a very good OLED panel that is very similar to the one in the iPhone 11 Pro Max. The only difference is that this phone screen is just not as bright as the 11 Pro or the 12 Pro Max, you know. But it is still a very bright phone as you can see. Everyday usage for this phone has been amazing and I've never once complained that the screen isn't bright enough. Now the fun part, the A12 Bionic chip. How has the A12 Bionic chip held up? Does iOS 14 benefit this phone in any way, shape or form? Is it any good? The answer is yes, absolutely. This phone is blazing fast even till today and there is no instance where I feel that this phone is slow or frame drops or any kind of lagging issues when I'm playing games or when I'm surfing the web, browsing through Instagram. Everything is just silky buttery smooth and that's what I love about Apple. They optimized their devices for a very very long time and this device has definitely not slowed down. I do however find a little bit more of a hiccup when it comes to the RAM management because uh, this phone does have very very little RAM. So I do realize let's say if I open Twitter and I leave it in the background and I just get out and I go to Instagram or YouTube, when I go back to Twitter it usually doesn't stay on the same page. It's not a really really big deal but I do wish that there's a little bit more RAM crammed into this phone in order to give us a better performing device in this day and age. I always find that having more RAM is sort of like future-proofing yourself and uh, that is definitely the case in Apple devices. The battery life is surprisingly not much different from the day that I've opened and unboxed this phone but I do want to say that the battery life is definitely subpar compared to the iPhone 11 Pro Max or even the iPhone 11 actually the battery just isn't as good and I find myself ending the day with around um, 10 maybe 5% and sometimes occasionally needing to bring my power bank along and charging my phone when I'm out. If you're gonna get this phone I recommend you bringing a power bank with you wherever you go. Gaming performance on this is just stellar. I find myself gaming a lot on this phone because it just feels really pleasant to game on. It feels responsive, it's fast, there's no frame drops, the phone doesn't get super heated up or anything like that. Um, I usually play PUBG and Among Us on this phone and uh, it hasn't struggled since day one. Now comes the pricing which I absolutely love for this phone and why I think this is the best valued phone in 2020. When the iPhone 11 Pro Max came out, this phone actually dropped to around $700 to $750 on eBay and that is just crazy in my opinion for such an amazing phone with such amazing build quality and software support 
and you will still get up to two to three years of software support. Right now, you can currently pick this up on eBay for around four to six hundred dollars, depending on the storage and configuration that you want. And that is just absolutely a steal. If you can find a phone like this for four hundred dollars, I think you should go for the iPhone XS Max over any kind of budget or mid-range Android phones any time of the day. This is better, and I absolutely recommend it. With that being said, I recommend this phone absolutely. This is DDT signing off.